Defections raise Kanu stakes as presidential heavyweights battle for massive votes. And INEC is, of course, uh, being reacted to as they disapprove of political campaigns in worship centers. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Mary Anakon. With Lagos topping the list of states with most re registered voters, Kano is the state with the second highest number in the nation. Politicians and political parties in Nigeria are beginning to position themselves as the suitable grooms to win the hearts of the Kano state residents, a state in the north of the country which has evolved over time in advance of the general elections in 2023. Now, this may uh, have something to do with the state's total number of registered votes. Kanu had more than 5 million voters in 2019, according to INEC um, voter list. Well, today we're joined by two gentlemen to break down this conversation. Ibrahim Kabara is a political commentator and a former YPP governorship aspirant. And Comrade Kabiru Dakata is the executive director of Center for Awareness justice and accountability. Um, Mr. Kabara, thank you so much. Uh, Kabiru, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. Let's talk about what's happening in Kanu State. Like I said in the opener, it's the, one of the most courted states right now. We see presidential candidates flocking to Kanu State, of course, trying to also get involved in the politics behind whoever uh, has the power to you know, give them these votes. But we also see that there is, there's been this divide of voters or following between three people, uh, the sitting governor, um, uh, the former governor, um, who is now the presidential candidate of the y, uh, N NNPP, and of course, the now PDP member, um, Mr. Um, uh, Shakarao, of course, these three men seem to have the upper hand when it comes to politicking in Kanu State. So let's start with that. Why do these people have such a cult following? And why does the average politician or, let's say, presidential candidate have to, one way or the other, court these three? I think to start with the presidential candidates who are proving Kano to get support of the voters, is because you know for the uh, last five consecutive elections we we had, there's one major factor that almost dominated the Kano uh, uh, politics in Kano, especially when it comes to the issue of presidential election. That factor is Buhari factor, and for 2023 we are going to uh, have presidential election without that factor. So presidential elections are going to see how they can take advantage of Buhari's exit to get support of the voters. And for the five elections we had, uh, uh, presidential elections, no presidential candidate that contested with Buhari that got the minimum 25% in Kano State. And some of these candidates are still uh, contesting for 23, 2023 elections. One of them is Atiku Abakar of PDP. He couldn't get 25% of the vote cast in Kano in 2019 and still because of Buhari's factor. And today there is no Buhari. So Atiku is trying to see how he could um, uh, get votes, go votes uh, from Kano State. For Konkoso, people are seeing Konkoso as the likely replacement of Buhari's factor in Kano State because he has followers, he still has influence in Kano's politics and in uh, politics of some states uh, in the northern part of the country. You talk of Governor Ganduje. You cannot in any way compare Governor Ganduje with the other two uh, political gladiators in Kano. Governor Ganduje is, is relevant in the system because of the position he's occupying. And also, people are seeing Ganduje as not a strong politician, a national politician to influence votes for a candidate. So, so, so you talk of these two people, two people, and even among the two, 
Konkosu is the dominant politician in the state. For Shekarov, when you talk of national politics, Shekarov tested his popularity in 2011 when he contested presidential election. But what happened? He could only got 526,000 votes in 2011. Mm. He couldn't get the 25% from his state when he was a governor. Mm. So also in 2015, Shekarov supported Jonathan. He was uh, in, he moved to PDP. He was given a ministerial appointment to support good luck availing Jonathan. But even at that, Shekarov could not support Jonathan to get reasonable votes. He could only got 10% of the votes cast in Kalu. He could only go 215,000. So if you talk of national politics and presidential elections in Kano State, the two gladiators, Ganduje and Shekarov, cannot in any way compare themselves with Konkosu. This is being the fact that even with the dominant popularity of Buhari in the first elections we, we talked about, hmm. 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015, and 2019, for all the three elections before 2015, Buhari maintained 1.6 million votes from Kano State. But what happened in 2015 when he joined camp with Konkosu, Buhari got 1.9 for the first time. But in 2019, with Buhari as the president of this country, with Ganduja in Buhari's camp in APC, with Shekharov in Buhari's camp in APC, the three of them could only got 1.4 million votes. The worst result Buhari ever had in his presidential contest from Kano. Hmm. So the three people, for Shekharov, he has uh, 20 uh, he has treated himself to be a supporting actor. So people are saying, why can't Shekharov, instead of jumping from one party to another, to be bold enough to do what uh, Konkose did? Konkose adopted a small party. In four months, you can see how the party is gathering momentum, not only in Kano State, but in other states in both North and also Southern part of the country. Hmm. So I don't see Shekharov making any impact in terms of supporting Atiku to get more support. In fact, in, the, in one of the articles I have released recently, I advise Atiku not to put so much expectation on Shekharov because Atiku himself can do what Shekharov cannot do for him in Kano. Atiku got 21% from the presidential votes cast in 2019. The Karao could only got 19% for himself in 2011. So Atiku also can, can do a, uh, something for himself, not necessarily relying for Shekarao, who has little or no political influence as it is, because for any movement he had, leaving one political party to another, some of his followers will refuse to follow him. Okay. Recently, we have had one of them uh, had an interview uh, with BBC. He said, yes, Shekharov left, but we are not going with, we are not following him. It's mm. a current uh, House of Representatives member, uh, member from Kano State. So I think we need to contextualize this conversation to make people understand that in Kano, we have our pattern, uh, voting pattern that um, uh, we, we sometimes the voters will look at one person and vote for that person massively. And like I said, Buhari has been the major beneficiary of that factor and he's exiting the stage. And people are seeing Konkoso as the likeliest replacement of that Buhari's factor. Great. Uh, joining us also is, of course, Ibrahim Kabara, who is a political commentator and former YPP uh, governorship aspirant. Um, Mr. Kabara, if you can hear me, um, Kabir is saying that the governor, the sitting governor of a state, of the state in Kanu, does not have as much political prowess as, of course, a Kwankwaso, who's now a presidential candidate, and, of course, a Shekarao, who has, again, jumped ship from the NMPP to the PDP. But let us know what, where you stand. Is this really a three-horse race in Kanu state in terms of how the votes will be split, or is it 
like he said, mostly a Kwan Kwaso takes all. Uh, I, I think the viewers, uh, presently, the political temperature in Kano is very hot, and no barometer can really give you a very clear reading of where the pendulum of the clock will swing to come 2023. Uh, Kano politics uh, is, uh, consists of majorly three political sheds. That is, the APC shed is under the incumbent governor of uh, Kano, uh, Ganduji, while the PDP, uh, you cannot specify who, who had the political shed there, because there is presently a split. Uh, Mohammed Abacha and uh, Anin Wali Temp are, 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 are the major uh, divisions that form that uh, political shed, while the other shed under NNPP is spearheaded by uh, His Excellency. Uh, former governor, former minister, Rabbi Musa Konkoto. Uh, this sh shows you that what may likely happen in Kano in 2023 may be what happened on the 14th December 1991 when the election between NRC and SDP took place. Uh, the former governor, architect Kabir Ibrahim Gaya, suddenly emerged victorious over Magaji Abdullahi, who was assumed as the clear victor come that election. But just over the night, Kano people suddenly changed direction and voted NRC, bringing in Governor Kabir Gaya. Now, if you say the Kolshe Karou has defected uh, from AMPP to PDP to APC and uh, later to NNPP and now back to PDP, that may still give him an advantage of being somebody who has massive supporters behind him because he was a governor for eight years, he was a minister, and then presently an incumbent senator. And because of the high respect, people who follow him have for him mm -hmm. because they say he is uh, a person of high morality, a person of high simplicity, a person who has uh, faith in, in, in his religion. And they say this is, these are rare virtues that are easily seen in politicians. So, so, he, so, so he, Mr. Kabara, you're, you're, you're saying huh? that you're saying that Senator Shekharau has these characteristics, um, these exactly. virtues that, are you saying that the other political politicians, I'm talking about the uh, former governor, um, Kwon Kwoso, and of course um, the sitting governor, do not also have these qualities and that's why they may probably not have as many followers? I'm trying to understand not, not, your not, point not, here. Not at all. Uh, Kwon Kwoso has his own style and qualities as well. Mm-hmm. Because that's why he is heavily endeared by the youth in particular. Because uh, the time he spent as governor and as minister, he assisted in no small measure a large chunk of youth who were unemployed and who were looking for educational channels to pursue various professional endeavors mm -hmm. and he fulfilled 
such kind of aspirations for them. And that has really made him being held highly elated by this class of political voters. Because out of the number of over 6 million voters in Kano, Konkoso could boost off having the greater part of the youth behind him. Because youth constitute almost 73% of any registered voters mm. in any location in Nigeria. And so Konkosa has that advantage. While Shikaro has that advantage which I have enumerated. Let's talk about the quickly, quick, quick, quickly, I'm so sorry to speak over you. Quickly, let's talk about the recent political nomadism that we've seen um, two of mm. these three exhibit. Uh, I, I think um, um, Mr. Kabiri Dakata spoke, spoke quickly uh, about that, but let's come to it in, in its entirety. We've seen Shekarao move from one party to another in the space of a very f few months, and you talked about a following that he has. Um, how are people supposed to trust his choices if these movements are happening in quick successions? No, no, but believe you me, the, the deception, the deception uh, uh, scenario which uh, uh, really surrounded Shekaro has depleted a number of his followers. So many of them now uh, have non talent as far as their face is concerned in, in, in Shekaro. And they are saying they may likely vote or not to vote come 2023. And those who will vote may not vote in the direction of Governor Ibrahim Shekaro. These are the things. Mm. As for the incumbent, uh, Ganduji, the Vahari factor that surrounded him before has now fizzled out. Because a number of people are, are, are disenchanted on the performance of the ATC at the, at, at the national and the, and, and the state arena. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as far as the visual projects are concerned, Ganduja could be rated very high because he has achieved a lot in executing communal projects desired by the, by, by the citizens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. But, but despite that, the Bahar factor may not, may not allow him have an age over his competitors when it comes to the next election. Exactly. Let me go back hmm? to, to, to you, um, Comrade Dakata. Um, it's very interesting what um, Ibrahim Kabara is saying here about, you know, the governor, the sitting governor. Um, I mean, let's, let's juxtapose this with, let's say, Governor Wike in River State, who's saying you cannot win these elections without my state. Um, so I'm, I'm putting this question to you. Can anybody, um, let's say, can Governor Ganduje say this? I mean, again, your, your colleague here is saying that he's not necessarily done well and he's somewhat lost the trust uh, uh, of the people in Kano State. And of course, the people are also aggrieved with the performance of the APC at the national level. Where does this um, put the APC and their ticket or their hopes in winning, uh, you know, some or if not most of Kanu State. I, I think Ganduje has not that um, power to to claim that um, you cannot win. Of course, he can say one cannot win election without Kanu, but he cannot in any way claim that he has an, an influential factor to determine somebody's uh, victory in this state. But let me say something about trying to compare Malem Ibrahim Shekaro and um, uh, Governor Konkosu. Of course, the two gentlemen have something in common. They are both governors uh, for eight years in the state. They served as ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, Konkosu was a minister and Shekaro is a current minister. But can we interrogate the numbers? If we can use numbers to, you know, add value to our conversation. In 2015, the total registered voters in Kano State were around um, 5 million or so. 
Hong Koso contested the senatorial uh, position of Pato Central. He got 720, uh, sorry, 758,000 votes. Being the senator with the highest number of votes in 2015. In 2019, when the total registered voters in Kanu, the number was 5.8. Shekaro contested election, the same constituency, but Shekaro got only 506,000 votes. In 2015, Shekaro supported Jonathan. Shekaro was given a ministerial appointment in 2014 in preparation of 2015 election. Jonathan got only 215,000 votes. That, that was 10% of the votes cast in Kanu in 2015. The PDP, which Shekaro worked for in 2015, did not win a single House of Reps member, did not win a single senator, did not win a single House of Assembly member, did not win the gubernatorial election. So if somebody today come and tell us that Shekharov is influential, he has followers that are ready to, to vote for him, then we can ask ourselves, where were the followers in 2015 that could not support Shekharov to get more votes for Jonathan? that could not support Shekharov to get one single House of Assembly member, that could not support Shekharov to get one single House of Reps member, that could not support Shekharov to have one senator. But in 2015, like I said earlier, Congress supported Buhari, and he got all the elective positions from Kano State. They won the presidential election, they won the gubernatorial election, they won the 24 House of Representatives members. They won the three senators. They won the 40 House of Assembly members. So I think for election, we need to see the end of it is that victory. And one argument, or one point to support this argument, is even with the Buhari's popularity for the uh, three elections before 2015. It was only in 2003 when we saw that uh, blind uh, followers uh, followed in the same direction with Buhari, that after Buhari's victory, most of the candidates that contested under his APP then also won their election, with some of them not even having a single poster in some of the polling units. Mm. But in 2007, it was not this case. The was for him, for his party, was in 2011. Okay. When Buhari got uh, 1.6 million votes in the presidential election, but he could only win two House of Representatives members. He could not win a single senator. He could not win a single House of Assembly members. So if we're talking of political influence, the numbers, the positions won, that will be our guide, not okay. just having goodwill for somebody. I agree with him. Madam Shekaro is highly respected, is morally okay, and he has his followers in the state. But, 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 that like does not, said, but that does not come down to the numbers. Jumping from one party to another is making him to lose so many supporters okay. in the state. All right, quickly, um, I'm, because we're out of time, I, I'm going to give you, um, Comrade... Um, uh, sorry, uh, Ms. Ibrahim Kabara, I'm just going to give you, finally, what do you see for see happening in Kanu uh, now that we have so many people who are, um, like you said, in your words, um, undecided, you know, voters and non-challenged, yeah, yeah, as like, opposed like, to yeah, the many like, followers? Like I have what said happens? Earlier, yes. Nobody can say where the pendulum, the political pendulum is, 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 is swinging to. There is general voter effort, appetite now. A lot of voters, registered voters, are not going to vote as they said. They, they, they are indifferent. Hmm. Because they say they are tired of political development in the country. No dividends of democracy. 
has really come down to the level of the poor person. And secondly, even those who, who agree to come and vote, they said they will only look for personalities and vote for them, not for any political party. Okay. So wh where there is a very good and uh, elegant person who stands for an election, irrespective of which political party he belongs to, he will just be voted. Mm. That is just uh, to, to, solve, to solve this political crisis. Oh, well. Well, I want to say thank exactly. you. Ibrahim Kabara is a political commentator and a mm -hmm. former YPP governorship aspirant. Mm -hmm. And of course, Comrade thank Kabiru you. Dakata is the Executive Director, Center for Justice. Um, I want to say thank you, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All thank right. You. Well, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're talking civic responsibility. And of course, we have civic education every Thursday on this show. Today, we're going to be talking about, of course, INEX dispro disapproval of political campaigns in worship centers. It will be very interesting. Stay with us.